Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel on designing and building ML systems. In today's video, we will discuss about what do you really mean when you say ML systems. So when you build an ML based solution, you have to deal with uh, two different systems. And these two systems, they work together and complete the whole life cycle of model development and deployment. One of the system is called the learning system or the training system. Once the initial set of data has been collected either from the data lakes or the data warehouses or any other sources, the core task of the model development is carried out on this learning system which might involve data exploration, data preparation, building different models and model evaluation. One of the key step in this model development stage is to experiment with different feature engineering techniques and build different models and then compare their results. And the results can be based on the accuracy expectations defined in the problem formulation stage. And then the final model is selected. Let's take uh, the case of building a model to detect frauds. So you would have captured the previous data of frauds and non-frauds along with their attributes. And then you will do the data exploration data preparation, for example, outlier detection or feature scaling or feature imputation or maybe generate new features from the existing set of features. And then one of the key task is to experiment with different models like M1, M2, M3 and M4. Let's say you built a logistic regression model or decision tree model a random forest model or a deep learning model and then you compare the results and let's say the model M3 gives the best accuracy so M3 model is selected for the final deployment and this model development typically runs in a batch mode we don't normally rebuild or retrain these models continuously but of course, that depends on the specific requirements. Let's take the case of fraud detection models. They will be retrained probably every few hours or every end of the day because fraud patterns keep changing very rapidly. But if you take the case of, let's say, demand forecasting or customer churn prediction, then these models are typically rebuilt or retrained every quarter or probably every end of the year based on the new data or based on the change in the underlying business context. The scalability and the reliability of these systems are very important depending on the scope and the size of the models that you have selected to build. You may also need a specialized hardware like a GPU infrastructure especially if you want to experiment with deep learning models. Now let's look at the other system which is called the inference system or the prediction system. So once the model is developed and selected on the learning system, we deploy that model on the inference system. And when the new data is received, the inference system makes a prediction and the model that is deployed can either predict in real time or in a batch mode depending on the application requirement. Here the model is either embedded into the existing application or a module or can be invoked as a service in the inference system. Let's take an example of uh, the fraud detection model. So when a new transaction data is received, the model then predicts the likelihood 
of that transaction being fraud or not a fraud like a score or a probability value again the scalability and the reliability of this system is most important and this system may also need specialized hardware like a gpu infrastructure especially if you have selected a deep learning model to be deployed so how these two systems the learning system and the inference system they work together how they are integrated we have to look at some of the design considerations for example how the model would be transferred from the learning system to the inference system and do we only need to transfer the model or any other specific information that need to be transferred from the learning system to the inference system if yes what information and how do you transfer those information along with the model as well and when you deploy a model on the inference system the inference system might have specific constraints the model has to accommodate to so let's say you are building a model which makes product recommendations to the customers then those recommendations has to be integrated well into the use case or the workflow of the application or the e-commerce platform and those constraints have any impact on the model training process do we have to take those constraints into account while building the model on the learning system or we only build the model on the learning system purely based on the accuracy expectation and then we take care of those constraints on the inference system alone we will dive deeper into this constraints in the subsequent video similarly will there be any flow of information from the inference system to the learning system the inference system can actually generate new samples and examples which we can leverage later to retrain these models on the learning system which can learn new patterns in the data if you take the example of fraud detection model once the model detects or predicts the transaction being a fraud or non fraud some of these predictions may actually go wrong some of the actual frauds will be predicted as a non frauds and some of the non frauds will be predicted as frauds but once we detect or find the ground truth now those data points can become new samples and examples which can then be transferred onto the learning system and then we can retrain the model to learn these new patterns which can be deployed again later on the inference system hoping that this new patterns will be detected by the the newer model let's say you have built the model at time t0 with the initial set of data t0 and we will build the model called v0 which gets deployed onto the inference system and then the model runs from the time t0 to time t1 which generates an additional data that's a delta d then which can be brought into the inference system and then we add with the previous set of data d0 and create a new data set d1 and build a new model v1 which can then be deployed onto the inference system of course how do we add the new data along with the old data which is the topic of a, a another discussion which will take it up in a later video so if you look at the complete ml life cycle which starts from use case identification problem formulation and then based on the problem we collect data and prepare it do some exploratory analysis and also experiment with different feature engineering techniques and then we we'll experiment with many different models evaluate them and select the best model 
and finally that model gets deployed and we monitor the models so the step 3 4 and 5 are typically accomplished on the learning system but some part of data collection preparation is also done on the learning system whereas mostly the model deployment and monitoring is done on the inference system and some part of model evaluation can also be done on the inference system like online evaluation when you come to evaluation we will discuss about that as well so well we have come to the end of this video so in this video we primarily learnt about the learning or training system and the inference or the prediction system i'll recap some of the key points of this video on twitter so if you want to keep track you can follow me on twitter at manavanjan p so thank you and see you in the next video with a new topic